Hey, y'all, all around the world. Good news. We are doing another massive ticket drop for Monday tapings at the Mothership, the true home of Kill Tony. These all sold out in minutes last time we did it. We expect the very same to happen again. Presale begins July 14th at noon central time using the promo code 60 seconds. That's 60 seconds promo code July 14th at noon. On sale to the rest of the public, if there's still any left, on July 15th at noon. These are for the Monday shows for all of October, November, December, and January. So if you're planning a trip to Austin, Texas, or you're going to take a trip to Austin, Texas because you got tickets to Kill Tony, this is your time to do it. Again, July 14th at noon using the promo code 60 seconds and on sale to the normies on July 15th at noon. Join us on the ride of a lifetime. Go to ComedyMothership.com and get tickets. The arena is over halfway sold out. That's going to be gone soon. So uh, get your tickets for that. New Year's Eve, why not spend it with us? It is going to sell out. This is your chance to get tickets for a Kill Tony. Those of you listening around the world, not going to last much longer. This is Red Bank coming to you live from the Comedy Mothership here in Austin, Texas for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Give it up for Tony Hitchcliffe! <laughs> Who's ready for the best fucking night of their lives tonight, huh? Yippee! Here we go again. Make some noise for Red Band, everybody. Hey. You're at the number one live podcast in the world. It's called Kill Tony, and it's brought to you by the Red Rose, the Yellow Rose, Austin Security Guard Service, Gel Blaster, CM Smokehouse, and Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey, which presents the Kill Tony Band, everybody. Huh? You guys get to listen to that magic. That's Michael Gonzalez on the drums right there. The great Paul Deemer on the horns. Matt Muling on the electric guitar. John Dees on the keys. And that right there is the undeniable D-Madness, ladies and gentlemen. Undeniable. We have an unbelievable show for you. Before we start, here's a little bit more from the amazing sponsors that made tonight's episode available for you here right now. Hey, y'all. It's official. It's announced. It's out there. My largest stand-up tour of my entire life. All the biggest theaters in all my favorite cities. Toronto, Canada. Royal Oak, Michigan. San Antonio, Texas. Chicago, Illinois. Charlotte, North Carolina. Atlanta, Georgia. Columbus, Ohio. Kansas City, Missouri. Indianapolis, Indiana. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Tyson's, Virginia. Just outside of D.C. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Minneapolis, Minnesota. E Youngstown, Ohio, Cincinnati, Ohio, San Francisco, California, Sacramento, California, San Diego, California, Phoenix, Arizona, New York, New York, Clearwater, Florida, and Jacksonville, Florida. Tickets available at TonyHinchcliffe.com. Come see the crazy Texas fucking stand-up that I've been working on. You're not going to believe it. Let's have some fun. y'all. Using the internet without ExpressVPN is like writing an important report and forgetting to hit save. Most of the time, you'll probably be fine. But what if one day your computer freezes or crashes and all your hard work is gone? Let me tell you, as a member of the Writers Guild, <laughs> that would be terrible. Every time you connect to an unencrypted network, cafes, hotels, airports, any hacker on the same network can gain access to your personal data. 
passwords, financial details, etc. It does not take much technical knowledge to hack someone. Just some cheap hardware is needed. A smart 12-year-old could do it. Or a brilliant 9-year-old. Your data is valuable. Hackers can make up to $1,000 per person just selling your personal info on the dark web. Red man! I love it. I am going to the airport tomorrow, and of course, I am going to have ExpressVPN turned on my phone and my laptop. It could even be on my tablet. It's all of your devices. It's easy to use. You just fire up the app, click one button, and get protected. Super secure. Did you know it would take a hacker with a supercomputer over a billion years to get past ExpressVPN's encryption? Ain't no one got time for that. Fire up the app, click one button, and get protected. Phones, laptop, tablets, and more so you can stay secure on the go. You want ExpressVPN. So secure your online data today by visiting expressvpn.com slash killtony. That's express, E-X-P-R-E-S-S, vpn.com slash killtony, and you can get an extra three months for free. Expressvpn.com slash killtony. I'm telling you, delicious, amazing, greatness, and goodness. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Take a bite out of summer with HelloFresh. From chef-crafted seasonal recipes to their new fresh and fit summer menu, HelloFresh brings flavor right to your door. Pre-portioned ingredients help cut down on food waste while step-by-step instructions make cooking a breeze, not a chore. Make your home the hangout place this summer with crowd-pleasing eats. From a backyard bratwurst bar to tangy key lime pie, HelloFresh Market makes summer entertaining a cinch. You know, they call it the freshman 15 when you go to college. I call it the Texas 20. When I got here, I ended up with a gut that I've never had before in my life. But thanks to eating clean and hot yoga, I have been able to trim down to literally the best shape of my freaking life. And HelloFresh totally helps me with this. And it's also, if you don't care about your body and are just into really delicious food, it's good for that too. Red Band. Wow, what a segue. <laughs> you know, ever since I've moved to Austin, and I am very guilty of getting delivery all the time because every time I go to the grocery store, I buy too much and half of it goes to waste. Well, guess what? HelloFresh is cheaper than delivery. It's 25% cheaper than takeout. I love HelloFresh because it has quality proteins, fresh produce, and plans for many lifestyle. It's no wonder why HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. No doubt about it. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Tony50 and use code Tony50 for 50% off plus free shipping. This is a no-brainer. HelloFresh.com slash Tony50 and use code Tony50 for 50% off. The greatest country on planet Earth, it is America's number one meal kit. You guys ready to start tonight's fucking show or what? Come on, people. You're in Austin, Texas, the live music capital of the world, the comedy capital of the world. Are you guys ready to start tonight's fucking show? Every single week, I have two of the funniest humans on the show. Uh, This is uh, one of those very awesome episodes where I think I'm showing you guys uh, two of the best currently, but also really, these are really, I mean, these are the fucking future, future fucking stars of the world. Two of my favorite comedians. Make some noise for Brian Simpson and Trevor Wallace, everybody. Come on. Here we go. Brian Simpson. Netflix, Brian Simpson, filming his special here in a couple months. The great Trevor Wallace, filming his special at the Paramount Theater, July 14th and 15th. Brian Simpson, comedy.com, Trevor Wallace, comedy.com. BS with Brian Simpson and Stiff Socks with Trevor Wallace. They're very popular podcast. Guys, you've both been guests on this show before. Welcome to the show. Who the fuck is saying that? Can we go uh, Mercedes? Go fucking choke a bitch out real quick. <laughs> How about a hand for Mercedes, everybody? She's the muscle. I know what you're thinking. Oh, wow, they have a hot chick working security. She's like fucking special forces and can kill you with her pinky, so don't fuck around. Don't be a homo. She will kill you. How you guys doing? Welcome back to the show. Grab those microphones, say anything at all real quick, and then I'll explain the show. What's up? I'm here from California, fucking idiots. What's up? <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. Fuck Look out. City. This guy's worst enemy. This <laughs> dumb fuck right here. He's scared to death of people like you. 
<laughs> living within a, a 30 minute radius of him. <laughs> Brian Simpson, here at your home club. Yeah, dude, I perform on the stage every night, but I've never got to sit here high. In the yeah, it, it, it's it, nice it, to get to sit. Awesome. It is. You guys have been guests on the show before, so you know all about it. This bucket is absolutely filled to the gills with over, I believe, 200 names. And The Undertaker's uh, lanyard is uh, in the bucket. You know, first world problems. Look at that. That one's itching to get out. Um, if I pull their name, they get 60 seconds uninterrupted to do stand-up comedy, everybody. A new minute that they haven't done before. Maybe it's their first time. You know their time is up and you're the sound of a kitten. That means they have to wrap it up then or else they bring out the angry West Hollywood bear, which just interrupts them. And then I interview them. We find out more about them, maybe what they could be talking about, should be talking about, what's interesting about their lives at all whatsoever. And uh, we find out what makes them different. Are you guys ready to start tonight's show? Well, well, well. Um, I don't know if you guys have been following along with the storyline of the legendary uh, Hans Kim, but some extreme highs and extreme lows lately. A lot of the highs have been on mountains of cocaine, and uh, a lot of the lows have been on this stage, but something changed uh, a week and a half ago when we decided to start having him challenge every single week for his regularship spot. He's been a regular every week for over two years. We've seen this guy go from living in his van to literally thriving, selling out every weekend, Hawaii, Phoenix. He was just in Chicago, sold out shows all weekend at all the best comedy clubs in the world. But his minutes have been a little bit shaky on the show, so we literally have someone challenging him that goes on after him every single week that if they win, they become the new full-time regular on the show. What we've learned is that it makes Hans Kim perform a lot stronger, a lot better, because <laughs> he's fighting for his life. So with no further ado, Sing along if you know the words. This is Hans Kim. This is Hans Kim. Hey. I saw an ad for firefighters on it, and on it had, uh, on it had an Asian dude and a woman. If I'm ever in a fire, and I see an Asian dude and a woman coming to rescue me, I'm gonna kill myself. What, you send the HR department? <laughs> when you're in a fire, you don't want to see diversity. <laughs> you want to see a Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see generations of food security and white privilege. <laughs> Not an Asian dude and a woman. Who's gonna drive the fire truck? <laughs> Tired of all these people trying to make America into a safe space for white people? That already exists, it's called Europe. You wanna drink tea and kiss dudes on the cheek? Go back to England, faggot. <laughs> Thank you. Wow, there it was. Man, I was a little nervous at the beginning there. <laughs> Tripped over the hole, I saw an ad with a firefighter fire, ad. It was an ad with a fireman, it was a fireman. I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, yeah, And I then you that. fought, 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 like only a real experienced uh, autistic Asian boy could do. <laughs> How do you feel like that went, Hans? I felt like it went amazing. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Am yeah, I right, Oprah. people? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Hans. That is another new minute. It's hard to write a new minute. That's a complete bit. The uh, What kind of ad? Well, when you say uh, you saw an ad, you say it like you read it in a magazine or something like that. <laughs> Are you trying to say you saw a commercial? or? It was a TV show, but I changed it to ad because it hit better with my demographic. <laughs> What's your demographic? <laughs> Uh, drunks and sex perverts. Incredible. Guys, you've seen Hans Kim before. What'd you think about that minute? Brian Simpson, Trevor Wallace. Yeah, well, I felt exactly like you did. In the beginning, I was like, oh, no, Hans. Yeah. God, can you make rent after you're not on Kill Tony? You know? That's true. You guys are roommates. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> These are, <laughs> you're looking at 
the real Kill Tony fans out here. Brian, is there anything about being a roommate with Hans that you can tell us? I mean, he's been a very regular character on the show for uh, two years. I'm sure there's something people would love to know. Well, you know, look, I, I'm not one to put my business in the street, but I'll just say it's exactly what you would imagine. <laughs> I love Hans. Oh, yeah. We all do. Uh, Trevor, have you ever seen Hans before? Uh, not live. seen him on live. I love the outfit. It makes me just want to, like, vape and fight a Taco Bell employee. You know? It's just fucking <laughs> Baja blast some shit up. You know what I mean? Thank you, Trevor. I wore this for you. Did you really? Fuck yeah. yeah. You got any jewel pods on you? Hell yeah. <laughs> you do? They're banned in California, so hook it up, dude. Hell yeah. I thought it was great. It was a phenomenal minute. Thank you. A good new minute, Hans. You know how this goes. Put the mic back in the mic stand. Go back behind the curtain. How about one more time for Hans Kim? We're going to see him in just a second. He's not gone. No, that was Hans Kim music yet. Guys, what you're about to see is, again, I mean, this is a whole new era of Kill Tony. Someone fighting for regular ship to start the show is insane. And I can only give credit to one of my favorite mentors and heroes, the great Vince McMahon, who likes starting shows with a bang every once in a while. I think it works out great. Anyway, the guy who you're about to see has the opportunity to change his fucking life. He's had a very controversial run on Kill Tony. He's on or off. I mean, it's either home runs or fucking big miss swings. Also has a huge cocaine addiction. Um... <laughs> He has great musical abilities, a lot of different things. He's fairly, fairly, really, really new to stand-up comedy. I think only about eight or nine months in. So here he is, fighting to become a regular every single week on the number one live comedy podcast in the world. Make some noise for Uncle Laser, everybody. Cuck holding. When one fucks one's wife while one other watches and or masturbates. Not as funny as I thought either. It's not as good as it is either. See, the other day in Vegas, I got involved in a cuck holding situation. All right, I'm playing slot machines, being the degenerate piece of fuck that I am. This snaggletooth old man walks up to me and said, hey, man, we're big fans of yours. Me and my wife watch you all the time. It'd be an honor if you would fuck her while I watch. I said, I'm going to pass, my guy. He goes... I'd be willing to pay you some shekels for your time. I said, all right, well, let me take a look at her now. This wildebeest of a woman comes crawling out under the vending machine. She walks up to me. I can hear her breathing from 20 yards away. She looks leathery like she fell asleep in a tanning bed. Like a fucking Buick seat. I said, nah, man, I'm going to have to pass. He said, I'll give you $4,000. I said, I said, man, to be honest with you, Buick's not that bad of a car. I'll take her for a spin. That's it? Well, I mean, if there's more, how much longer is the thing? I don't know, about another minute? Another minute? 30 seconds. That's all. You know the format of the show. That's not, that's not fair. That's your minute. That's my minute. Okay. All right. Uncle Laser. <laughs> all right. Okay. All week, this guy. What, what have you been saying? I'm going to bury him. I'm going to bury him with a fucking shovel. I Meanwhile, you're dressed like you just dug yourself out of a grave. I look like going... <laughs> I'm going to my own funeral, The Tiger King on a parole hearing right now. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. Uncle Laser. What a special fucking treat. So what can you just at least tell us, separate from the minute, which won't count to the audience voting, but how does the story end? How's it end? Yeah. Oh, so I went up there, and uh, when I got up there, he threw me a curveball, and he's like, hey, man, you can fuck her, but I want to wear your socks while you do it. <laughs> and that was very strange to me, and I'm like, no. Like, my mama gave me these socks. These are my lucky socks. I'm in Vegas. So he gave me $200. I let him wear my boxers on his head, right? And so... Yeah. I finished, you know what I'm saying? And then I took my $4,000, I went to the roulette table. $4,000, hold on. 4, 4, now, did you use a condom with this lady? No. <laughs> how, long did, how long did this... What are you talking about? I oh, forgot yeah. who I was talking yeah, to, I'm dude. sorry. Drink out of a water hose, don't wear a condom. It's pretty simple, dude. Right. 
And you never get sick. Never get sick, immune. Uh, but I finished, and I took my four. Well, hold on, I got another question. How long is the whole sexual intercourse pumping? I mean, 20, 25 minutes. I feel like anything over that's overhandling. Right. <laughs> and anything under is underperforming. <laughs> so you always look at that 20, 20 to 25, 25 minute minutes, window. That's the window right Right, there. that's the thing. You kept your socks on. Kept my socks on. So then I go down the roulette table and I put all that $4,000 on black. You know what color it came up? What? Green. No way. So then I'm sitting there like, well, fuck, that went quick. <laughs> so I did what any piece of shit degenerate gambler do. And if anybody here has a gambling problem, you'll know this all too well. I marched my ass right back up to that hotel room and I fucked her again for $1,000, and I let him wear my socks. <laughs> but I that get... does not count to your voting, That's by so... the way. Ah. You son of a bitch. You got to learn how to edit. You got to learn how to edit how the to fucking read. shit out, dude. I don't, I don't even know how to read. You're up, you're up there singing fucking country music lyrics. Yeah, I was just about to say, you, like, the, the, only re the reason no. you're going to lose the Hans tonight is because he's... He's so much experience, more experienced at writing jokes because you could have got to that in yeah. that minute. All you that other bullshit you was I saying. I could have got rid of this dictionary. That isn't actually a dictionary. I realized when I opened it. I mean, because you could have just been like, hey, got a, a, dude, a dude paid me to fuck his wife. She was ugly. And then bam, right to the right. I did it for $4,000. Yeah. Okay. You could have got hard, that out. We're right, but that we're just ready. feels like too written. You to do like. stand-up comedy like you're reading a child to bed. And then a wildebeest came from behind the vending machine. Yeah. yeah. It's like, like it's poetry. Not, it's just, it's, yeah. you got to bang. Want, you got to get to that but shit. But I want to I paint the story, set the mood, you know? Yeah, but you happened. don't talk it like doesn't, that. It though. doesn't work like that in stand-up right. comedy. There's no painting moods. People come to laugh. They don't come to be like, whoa. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh, what a special trip this is. Hans Kim, get back out here. This is, uh, this is going to be, uh... Yeah, Hans Kim has defended his throne twice already. Once against golden ticket winner Enrique Chacon. Another time against golden ticket winner and uh, favored, uh, almost barely favored, a very even match, Jared Nathan. This is his third time defending his regularship. How many of you have Uncle Laser being the new regular after his performance tonight? Make some noise. You guys get to decide. It's all the racist people. Look at all those mustaches. <laughs> How many of you have Hans Kim retaining? Well, Uncle Laser, we gave you a shot. You put up a fight. I hope that you learned something here. You got to fucking trim the fat. It's the ultimate note. It's the one note that everybody in their first few years, a lot of people have been doing this shit 10 years and they're not editing enough. It is the real secret. Writing is the most important thing and then cutting that shit down to only the pieces you need is the thing that separates the goods from the greats. So I think you learned the ultimate lesson here tonight because... You got buried by chopsticks, you know what I'm saying? You got fucking, he put you in a to-go box with a little metal handle. <laughs> He's gonna carry you home. Hans Kim, what do you wanna say? I'd like to present Uncle Laser with his very own little joke book made by Bonsai. <laughs> <laughs> Make some noise for Uncle Laser. Hans, you wanna? You want to say anything else? I'm not surprised, motherfucker. Oh! <laughs> Three and O, oh, undefeated. The first ever regular, not only to defend his position once, twice, but three times. Hans, you are undeniable. Make some noise for Hans Kim, everybody. Thank you, guys. That was Hans Kim. That was Hans Kim. That was Hans Kim. All right. I pulled a name out of the bucket. Now, this is where shit gets crazy if you guys don't know because literally any random human being is allowed to sign up. So anything can happen. It could be somebody's first time. It could be a local legend that's been signing up for months hoping to get a big break on this show. With a brand new minute of stand-up comedy, we're going to meet them all together. Make some noise for Kyle Drake, everybody. One more time for Kyle Drake, everyone. Come on. How are we doing? We doing good? Yeah. So uh, I come from a pretty interesting family. Uh, most comedians do, you know. Like uh, my father, uh, he was a drug addict. Yeah. Uh, but he was a responsible one, though. 
Like, uh, he'd only do drugs on weekends. Yeah. Because, like, that's when he had custody. But... <laughs> yeah, happy Father's Day, right? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Interesting family. All I really have to say is, like, white people, we're not the best. We're not. We're not. We don't even have the best genetics either, by the way. Like, I have a brother, right, who's 25 years old and he's already completely bald. Yeah, it's crazy, but cancer's a bitch, so <laughs> I know. Yeah, that's a fun one, because it's real. Uh, I think I'm close to my time, I don't want to go over. Yeah. Kyle Drake, welcome. This is your first time on the show, correct? Yes, yes. Absolutely, okay, how long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, two and a half years. Where at? Uh, San Diego. San Diego. What are you doing here? Uh, visiting. S scoping it out. See scoping what the next it move out. Is, yeah. You're thinking about moving here? Yeah. Oh, okay. What do you think about people moving from San Diego? Is that okay? <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. I love how half of them didn't know that was in California. Like, oh, wait a minute. How do I feel about it? What do you do for work, Kyle Drake? Uh, I work at a research institute, and then I used to work at a comedy club. Okay. Mm -hmm. What are you researching? Uh, they do a bunch of stuff. They do like Alzheimer's, uh, dementia, stem cells. Okay. You know, Rogan stuff. <laughs> All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which uh, side of the argument are you on? Are you on Rogan's side or Dr. Peter Hotez's side? <laughs> uh, I believe Rogan runs this club, so I'm definitely on his side. <laughs> I'm trying to get more stage time, you know what I mean? Would your dad ever give your brother with cancer like drugs, like cheer him up a little or something? My dad? Yeah, you, you had the bit where your dad does drugs on the way. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 He didn't cheer him up at all. Does your brother really have cancer? Yeah, he survived, though. Okay, what kind of cancer was it? Uh, lymphoma. Okay. Yeah. What was that like? Did you try to make him laugh during it? Uh, no, I made a bit about it. <laughs> but I, 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 tried, I tried to, you know... He, he came with me. He loves comedy, so he's he gets here? it. He, not right now, no. But he, he, he passed he's away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's here spiritually okay. tonight. <laughs> he's no longer with us, um... What I drugs would your dad do? What kind of drugs was your father on? Uh, mainly alcohol, but uh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Where's the real oh shit? God. Give me Ozempic, brother. Give me the <laughs> real shit. Uncle Laser has more sh drugs in his nose right now than fucking sounds like your dad ever did. <laughs> uh, okay. Kyle, what mm -hmm. do you do for fun? What makes you you? Um, Tell us something interesting about you Because you seem like a very, very normal white guy from San Diego yeah. Trying to come into a place that's filled with monsters So, uh, I'll do, I'll say anything for more stage time <laughs> <laughs> I, be <laughs> I believe Rogan owns the club <laughs> I just came to conquer and take over <laughs> I think the only, th I, I guess the fun thing I did is uh, I went to TJ and I lost a butt plug in a girl's ass. Wait a sec. Yeah, throw you a curveball now. Yeah. You had to pay for that. No. You went to TJ Tijuana, yeah. Mexico. Yeah. And you met a girl. Yeah. And she had a butt plug, or you had your own butt plug. No, she had it. Oh, I, don't, I don't bring them with me. But uh, uh, I mean, okay. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm glad we got Red Band's one fart noise out of the way. Jesus Christ. This guy cannot wait. By the way, the fun fact about the soundboard is that the fart board is a totally different app. No, don't go back to the fucking fart board. You're allowed one an episode. So he literally has to bring it up. Okay, thank you. Whoever's doing that, that's, that's insane, Deez. Thank you. I literally hate that, so thank you, Deez. Uh... Thank you, John. Back to the comedy show. Thank you, Jeremiah. I mean, John. Thank you so much. There you go. Yeah. Oh, oh. Sweet. Okay. All right. Shut off John's mic. Thank you. Hi, Kyle. Hi. <laughs> Tell me more about you. Um, well, I, I came from uh, the meth capital of California there for a bit, and then I moved to San Diego for school. Where? And Stockton? It, Modesto? Uh, it was Riverside. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. And then I you know, went to school in San Diego, 
uh-huh. uh, studied like neuroscience, and then I started comedy uh, there, worked at a club there, and then lost a butt plug up a girl's ass there. At TJ. Oh, we're back to that already. Yeah. Okay, I gave you. I'm trying to give you something. How did you lose that upper ass? Did you? I was having sex with her, and then on a thrust in. Nice. It, uh, so I was going through the front, and it went in the back, and then I snatched yeah. it out with my 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 cute little hands. You got it out? Yeah, and Holy we still had shit. sex afterwards, so I was happy about it. If you got it out, then how did you lose it? I lost. It went in, and then I got it out, but it wasn't like permanently lost. Yeah. <laughs> It was sucked into the ether for a little bit, and then I got out. Yeah, but butt plugs usually have a stopper, like a wall. I know, Like I know. it went th- oh, through yeah, the wall? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Lord. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, I, don't, I don't even get it, Kyle. I don't even think this really happened. Did this it, really it, happen? It, yeah. I'm, try- I'm trying to give you something so weird. What, what was she did, doing when you were in there just getting it? Was she I was trying. Well, I was trying there? to make. It tr- I was trying to get it out before she freaked out because it's, it's a fucking muscle, so it'll start clamping on it. So I was like, I'm, ge- I'm getting it out. I just d- did it as fast as I could before she freaked out. And then you're at TJ. It's like I'm gonna. What am I gonna take her to a hospital when I don't even speak English? I mean uh, Spanish. Yeah. Holy shit. So did she come or not? What happened? <laughs> No. <laughs> oh, fuck. Wow. Fuck. A little dose of honesty there from Kyle Trigg. <laughs> she was a big girl, right? Yeah. No, she's a little skinny what? girl. This makes no yeah. sense. Well, let's not say girl like that. <laughs> I think oh, comedy's yeah, going to be, be hard for you, Kyle, because you have a liar's face. I, I yeah. Like, everything you say looks like you lying. Even though I'm, like, your face just looks like you lying. I'm not. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, That's let me smell your fingers. Let me see you. Let me see you. Let me see you. <laughs> he did it. Yeah, yeah he did it. <laughs> He did it, yeah, to himself. What? You know, it was real quick. Kyle Drake, everybody. Thanks, there everyone. he goes. Got another bucket pool ready. This is very exciting. The name seems kind of familiar. I do believe this person's been on before. One name name, which is always a good sign. Make some noise for Angel, everybody. Let's see what happens here. The smooth stylings of Angel. This is Angel. Hello. All right, what's up? Yes, I'm Angel. I heard Uncle Angel. Nah, motherfucker, I'm Theo Angel tonight. Sorry. So, yeah, man, so uh, I'm from Boston, Massachusetts. I'm coming away from the north. Yeah, where they at? Okay, so I'm coming over here to tell you guys you guys are free tonight. Woo! All right, all right, Juneteenth, funny joke, but probably killed that, all right? I'm just saying. All right, so also, uh, Angel, half Puerto Rican, Salvadorian. I've never met so many Mexicans in my life. Up north, you see more deers than them. If anything, you go up to Maine, they're picking the berries. But yo, you see a deer, that's it. You open a drawer to your kitchen, those roaches running out, there's your Puerto Ricans. All right, what's up? Um, also, uh, <laughs> up north, it's a little cold. It's, it's like bipolar weather. Down here, it's too fucking hot. Like, yo, my, I sweated so much, my brain cooked, and everybody's like, yo, you don't need to go back home. I don't, because I see a bed everywhere I lay down. Thank you, that's my time. All right. Okay. Angel, welcome. Have you been on this show before? Oh, there's the X. No, I have not. Okay. How are you? Good, I'm well. How are y'all? They are good. All They're right. better than you are right now. <laughs> have you ever done stand-up comedy before? I Yes. Yes, I have. Okay. How long have you been doing it? Uh, a few years. Pandemic kind of like took a pause. So yeah. I'm back. How about since the pandemic? No. No. So if anything, I'm under 10 fingers. Okay. Yeah. That's, thank God for that. Yes. That's good. When you said years, it got scary there. Yeah. Okay. I got a lot of other things going Why on. Why are you bundling up the cord like that? Okay. <laughs> There you go. So, do you live here? Are you on a safari right now? <laughs> I don't want to look like a Lego piece no more. <laughs> you know. I'm but God wants you to look like yo, a Lego look, piece, and that's what matters. And He right? is the creator of the universe. So <laughs> he, already, he already took away my wings and everything. You know. What wings? Thank you. I'm trying to get them back. What? <laughs> what wings? What wings did he take? It looks like he gave you breasts and thighs. <laughs> It's, it's my shirt. It came like that. I think it means a guy named yeah. Jesus took his chicken wings. Ah. 
Hey, I paid to get here. It's Juneteenth. You look like you do valet at Rainforest Cafe. <laughs> <laughs> you do look like that. It, it will probably pay better than this. The, he, the human <laughs> so seat warmer. It's highly recommended. Thank you. But that's my favorite restaurant, so that's All a compliment. Right. Yeah. yeah, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Uh, sauce by Angel. Okay. Sauce by Angel. Yeah, we're, we're working on like a title for this cafe. Okay, Angel. Uh, okay. Okay. What sorry. do you do for work? Um, I drive for a living. What do you drive? Like transportations, uh, more medical stuff, so... Uh, organs for transplant, saving You're lives. You're in charge of driving the organs? That a guy named Angel is yeah. in charge of yeah. delivering organs yeah. Yeah. to people I that need lives. them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. How long have you been doing that for? Uh, two years. All right. What were you doing before that? Uh, landscaping, home, outside Home Depot. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Angel. My goodness. Okay. That's why the hat, honestly. We know. <laughs> it's true. It's hot out here. <laughs> we know. It's a very specific hat. Okay. So, what are you doing in Austin, Texas? Where do you live? I, I, uh, Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, I came out here for you and for the show. Uh, when did you arrive? Friends. Saturday. When do you leave? I just bought my ticket today. When do you leave? <laughs> 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 tomorrow. I leave tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. And look at you. You got lucky enough to get on. How do you feel? Uh, awesome. Thank you, Is guys. There, yeah. Let me ask you something, because yeah. you're up here right now. A lot of people imagine what their appearance on the show would be like. You're, you're looking right at it. You're in the room. You're in the moment. What surprises you about what you see and feel? What's, what is expected? Did you picture it being like this? Uh, Did you envision anything whatsoever when you came <laughs> here? <laughs> do I need a lawyer? <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, nah, fun time, great time, you know. <laughs> you know, that's it. You know, T Tony, I have a feeling that uh, there's an organ thawing in here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just somebody's heart. Is is your name An real name Angel, or is, uh, did you call yourself Angel because of your job? No, it really is Angel. Your real birth uh, name is Angel. Yeah, uh, so it was God-given. I had no choice. Um, so uh, I stay with it, you know. Okay. Okay. You have any kids? You in a relationship? I got a cat, Harvey Dent. Your cat is Harvey Dent. Yes. Why'd you name it Harvey Dent? Because he has scars on his face. And oh, Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. We don't need no Tony Montana, Scarface, nothing like that. One good health care, you know. Oh, shit. All right. Angel, I got to tell you, there's been a lot of you people coming in. Less than 10 appearances <laughs> signing up for a show that has the ability to make people stars, and you just fucking clunk it up. You know what I'm saying? This is a very special little joke book. It says, you suck on the back. Kill Tony on the front. These bones eye joke books just keep getting better and better. Can you catch? Take Go back to where you were. Go back to where you were. Right there. There he goes. Angel, everybody. We're going to keep it moving hey, yeah. here. I think we're in the need for a little bit of a fucking jolt of comedy. And you guys are in for a very special treat right now. One of the regulars on this show, one of the most legendary regulars of all time, actually retired his regularship on the uh, very popular 10-year anniversary episode of the show in front of 3,000 people. He retired from being a full-time regular. And as a part of his retirement package, he gets the chance to do a brand new minute on the show every single time that he wants to. It's been only two weeks, and he's already cashing in. Here to debut a new minute for you. One of the great writers, roasters, and performers in the show's history. Make some noise for David Lucas, everybody. Yeah. I hate this uh I hate this new word women are using this uh this gaslighting shit. <laughs> I hate that word. It's like why are you trying to sound so extra? Like bitch, I'm not gaslighting you. I am lying to you. <laughs> Uh, 
Why are you trying to make it sound fancy, ho? This is old school, old fashioned lying, bitch. And if you're in a relationship, you gotta lie to your bitch anyway. She don't wanna hear the truth. They, women can't handle the truth. If you having sex with your girl, and she ask, is this the best pussy you ever had? By default, what do you have to say? Yes. You can't tell her no, the best pussy I ever had was actually from an IHOP waitress, bitch. That was... <laughs> you gotta tell her she had the best pussy, man. That's what I'm... All right, that's it. For it. Perfect. Exactly a minute, David Lucas. At it again. Yeah. Love that joke. Love that you're already fucking back with us. Yeah. Barely took a break. You love this shit. You're used to it. It's part of your regimen. Yeah, you got a nice little audience up here. To oh, table. shit. Wait, what, what's going on? You got fucking long neck and deep throat. <laughs> Wait, hey, what? This is long neck. You're deep throat. Okay, <laughs> well... You're the one that shoves more shit in your mouth than either one of us, so I don't know the fuck you're talking about. Is that the new uh, trans flag? What you got on your shirt? Oh, you son of a bitch. What the hell? Is it fucking jean material? Is that. You wearing that shit on Juneteenth, nigga? What the fuck? Yeah. Tony was like, I was a slave last night. Does that count? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> look at Trevor Wallace, boy. You look okay. like you about to be in uh dude, where's my car on ice, bitch. Yo ass. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want it to hit, but it hit. It hit. <laughs> David doesn't use Zillow, he uses Waffle House. You gotta try again, nigga. That oh, no. no. It take a long time for a joke to get from your brain to your vocal box. <laughs> <laughs> By the time it get to your vocal box, it ain't shit. Nigga. <laughs> nigga Trevor, boy, your ass out here. Nigga, looking like you just drunk beer in a handstand. Nigga. <laughs> <laughs> it fucking kicks in quicker, dude, okay? <laughs> it's fun to watch you make fun of skinny white boys that aren't me. <laughs> I don't ever get to do this. <laughs> very, very exciting. You wearing a Dennis Rodman shirt because you only hook up with rebounds? I'm wearing a uh, Dennis Rodman shirt because on this shirt he got his nails polished like you got your toes painted. Okay. You're the one. You're a big ball player. You do the food court press, right? <laughs> you. you only play basketball to play defense, nigga. Your ass be... <laughs> I got him. I got him. <laughs> you root for the Denver Nuggets because it's your favorite thing to order at McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. Oh, I got to think of what that go with a basketball phrase. Uh, nigga, you play front and center. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I love it. You play I, power forward. <laughs> okay. Power bottom. Would yeah, probably that would be power yeah, that's probably the right move. Uh, so how's it been going? How's retirement? Here's your father on a uh, special Father's Day treat. That, you, you got your dad here. That nigga look like Brian Simpson daddy, nigga. That nigga. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga. <laughs> and they all got the same head. <laughs> Hey man, I thought you, I was I thought I was immune you, on Juneteenth, man. You out here <laughs> looking you out here in your gold clothes. That shirt a little yeah, too small. Boy, your ass look like you invented fried chicken, nigga. Get your boat. <laughs> <laughs> oh <there. laughs> look, David Lucas out here looking like Rick Ross for less. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. He was being so good. He was he was so quiet. He left the mic on the yeah. table, and then you had to wake up, fucking Brian. That nigga Simpson. teach uh, Brian Simpson teach uh, Frederick Douglass studies in high school. <laughs> <laughs> and you can tell D Man is blind because ain't no way a regular man would come out with his hair looking like that. Oh come on, it looks good. <laughs> that mo- the front of D Man and his hair look like Florida. <laughs> oh how dare you? That motherfucker got an Eddie Monster. He, he's not gonna roast him back, Red Band. Put the mic. He can't even see the mic, nigga. Why you put it in his face? 
He got a feel for it. Oh, my. You got to tap the mic so he can hear the vibration. Oh, okay. Nowhere is that. All right. <laughs> Blindness is also a side effect of diabetes, so you better watch your mouth, David. You, you're going to be double D madness. <laughs> But you the only nigga up here with sugar in his tank. <laughs> what? That's an old black reference. That's what black people used to say when people be gay. They be like, he got sugar in his tank. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. You are sweating bullets It's hot as a motherfucker. And I've been drinking tequila. I'm retired, bitch. Hey. <laughs> I love it. David, uh, we yeah, absolutely I, love you. you. You're a fucking thank monster. You. I love the fact that you're still fucking flexing absolutely, these new man. minutes. A I'll be here at least one. like once a month, at least once a month. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I got it. A, a couple of announcements. Oh. Uh, July 12th to 13th. Pull up on your boy at Poughkeepsie. July 14th, uh, New York City, Sony Hall. July 21st and 22nd, Boston. Last Boston. July 28th, 29th, Rutherford, New Jersey at Bananas Comedy Club. Pull wow. up on your boy. David Some Lucas. plugs. Some yeah. plugs that won't get lost in a Tijuana girl's ass right there. <laughs> one more time for one of the greats in the history you, of the show, David Lucas. Absolute goat. Oh, we did forget to pull a name. Okay, we'll do that. Hey, is uh, is KP back there? Let's see. He ain't going nowhere. We. How many of you like it when comedians do good on this show? How many of you like it when comedians do bad on this show? Well, in that case, I have bad news for you. This next comedian's about to do really good on this show. This is the guy that took over full time when David Lucas retired two weeks ago. This is the newest regular on Kill Tony. We are, we've only seen uh, three performances from him ever in the history of the show. This guy is one of the talks of the club. Here with a brand new minute. Make some noise for someone who we truly believe is the fucking future. The one and only Cam Patterson, ladies and gentlemen. When I was in high school, I had a basketball coach, he smoked crack for real. <laughs> and he the only coach that ever believed in me in my life. He the only coach that ever believed in me. <laughs> and he was a real deal crack smoker. Like, that's what he did. I remember one day he came up to me, last time I ever saw him, he came up to me and said, Cam, if I'd had you for all four years, you'd have been an All-American. <laughs> then he walked away. Then the head coach walked up like, let me know, listen, let me tell you something, this nigga actually smokes crack. <laughs> You can't listen to this nigga, dog. He told a stripper she was gonna be a doctor last week. You can't listen to this nigga. This nigga's a crazy person. <laughs> I, I only tell that joke, cause I, used to, I broke somebody's heart one time. I, remember I, I used to go to, I used to work at Target, and my coworker always came up to me be like, Cam, going to your shows and shit made me chase my dreams. I was like, what you wanna be in life? He was like, I wanna go to the NBA. This nigga was 45 years old. <laughs> that's it. Hey, that's it. <laughs> Man, unbelievable yet again. So consistent. So your own self. So charismatic. Crisp delivery. Great punchlines. Great editing. Moving forward. How do you feel? Great, I feel amazing. Nigga. I got a job and shit. This shit dope. <laughs> yep, this yeah. is. I've never seen you in the mothership gear. You famously normally wear plain white t-shirts and sweatpants, and now you're wearing the mothership shirt and sweatpants. You work here now. <laughs> you work I, here now. Are they? Are you, they, I got shoes on. I got shoes on. They made you wear shoes. I don't think they made me. I just bought something to be professional. <laughs> 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 but let me put on some shoes. You know what I'm saying? Like, look, do I look, you like my shoes, nigga? Do you like my shoes? Say yes. If it's you guys racist. all got to witness Bro, Trevor's, you are Trevor's sure, sword, dog. You guys got to witness Trevor's first time being called the N-word right then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a historical moment. This yeah. nigga white as shit, dog. This oh, is, yeah. It's the whitest dude ever. How the fuck? Drew TV and this nigga, this is crazy. <laughs> These don't match. Hey. Oh my. How you doing, Mr. White Man? You okay? I'm, I'm good, man. I'm good, man. Great, beautiful. Can I get some hand sanitizer or something? I don't know. What the fuck? This man sprinkled cocaine on me. Nigga, that's racist. 
amazing performance. And Cam. It's good how Cam dressed like he wearing a uh, Katrina donation. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm about? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Looks like you work at Foot Locker and live out of a locker at the same time. No, you can't. Don't talk to me at Juneteenth. He can only say that. I'm not a, not a, you can go out. The only thing missing from that outfit is a, 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 a team that lost the Super Bowl's t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> it is amazing. Wearing his hurricane wear, Cam Patterson. Cam, how uh, how's life been going? You're writing a new minute every week. Yeah, yeah. You're out here. You got the job at the mothership. How does it feel? What are you working tonight? What is what exactly is your job? I'm the uh, I'm today. I'm the stair nigga. I'm the nigga on the stair. <laughs> now you, you know that's what it is on his resume. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. It is incredible. It is Joe Rogan's club. That is what he calls all the positions. <laughs> you have the bar, the stair, the yonder. Just use your imagination to you say the word that you I'm saying. Thinking. Nigga. Yep. You know, I know this guy knows. He doesn't even want Californians to move here. Imagine how he feels about black people from Florida. My goodness. Oh, Jesus Christ. You talking about this guy? This one right here. This guy with uh, no, no, no happiness on his face whatsoever. Do I make you nervous, nigga? <laughs> Are you scared of me? Come shake my hand. Come shake my hand. Oh, shit. Here we go. Shake my hand. Oh. Hey, Wow. Oh, wow. Wait, I, I can see from here he's, he's literally pissing his pants right now. It's incredible. <laughs> oh, my God. He just shoved his wallet up his own ass to save it. That is absolutely incredible. He just got kicked out of the Proud Boys when this airs. <laughs> wow. If wow. you want to shake my hand, I won't give you a phone back. So thank you so much. <laughs> Unbelievable. Cam, you know how to work the room. You come out. You're a fucking absolute stud of a goddamn up-and-coming rising star. I just don't see anything that can stop your fucking momentum. We absolutely love that you're part of the show, and uh, it's going to be so exciting to watch your fucking trajectory. You are on an unstoppable path that I think everybody wants to be part of. So congratulations, Cam Patterson, doing it again. Thank you so much. Come on, make some fucking noise for the future. Cam Patterson, absolutely. All right, back to the bucket we go. Here we go. That was fun. We had David Lucas and Cam Patterson back to back, and now we are back to meeting people, ladies and gentlemen. But this is how we met everybody. Every single one of these people, from Hans to Laser to Cam to David to everybody, we met them by pulling their name out of the bucket. So anything can happen. Make some noise for Sal Montilla, everybody. Sal Montilla. Perhaps Montilla. What's going on, y'all? Oh, thank you. Oh, you ugly people. Uh, thank you for coming out. I appreciate that. Um, I know what you're thinking. Why is my GTA drug dealer on stage right now? Um, ooh, that cough was rough a little bit. Um, <laughs> uh, plane crashes are rough, right? Can we agree that they're bad? But I actually think they're the perfect opportunity to get something off your bucket list. Because in that one minute before touchdown, you get away with anything. You are a video game character. You know what I do in that opportunity? When Abuelita and Nana, they're praying for salvation for a miracle, I'm going to get out of my seat and I'm going to punch a kid right there. I've always wanted to be in a fight. I'm always going to win. Having y'all? Uh, hey, our parents beat us. I want to know what that feels like. Right? Oh, my God. I didn't think I'd get this far, y'all. Honestly, uh, I thought I was going to black out on stage and pass out right now. Uh, okay. Right yeah. Wow. Hi over here, buddy. How hey, are you? what's going on? I'm your worst nightmare. Look over here. <laughs> Just keep looking at me. Don't get distracted. Uh, your ADD is uh, kicking in right you now. Oh, there you go. You just said something else. 
Look at you. Yeah. Sal. Can I call Cy. you? Sai? Yes. Oh, wow. Everything about you is fucked up. Look at that. <laughs> I thought that was a lowercase L. That's an S-A-I. And Montilla? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, now that's out there. <laughs> is that your real name? That is my real name. Wow. You fucked up. <sighs> I know. Okay. Let's I talk know. about it, Sai. Uh, one of the absolute worst performances imaginable. <laughs> Doing everything backwards, coming out, calling the crowd ugly, getting sidetracked by a very light, normal cough by someone in the second <laughs> row that nobody in the back of the room could hear. You had to describe it as rough. That cough was rough. Yeah. You got sidetracked there. And then you talked about plane crash as a punchlineless bit about how you would punch someone else's kid because you were yeah. punched by your parents, but you're punching another person's kid. So it's totally different than the parent. I'd imagine it's more satisfying if it's your own kid. Yeah, the cycle of abuse needs to keep going, well, you know. I'm perpetuating You missed it. one, Tony. Well, you just abused 330 people here tonight. <laughs> Brian, what were you going to say there? I, I said you missed one. He also said, I know what you guys are thinking, and then said something nobody was thinking. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. Why'd you call everyone ugly, though? It's Austin. They know that. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, Daddy Longneck's got some unfinished business <laughs> over here. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, man. Uh, I don't know why I did that. Probably first time jitters coming on here. First uh, time jitters. So you're yeah. saying this is your first time ever doing stand-up? No. On it's your Kill first Tony. time on the show. Yeah. How long have you been doing stand-up? Like a year, year and a half. How many like spots do you think you've done, if you had to guess? <sighs> How many times have you gone on stage? How many times has someone said your name and you've gone up there? Like Ballpark. Just a fucking one to 300, something right like too. that. One to three hundred times, something like that. I go up a lot. Somewhere between one hundred and three hundred times. I'm overestimating, y'all. It's so that window 100. is so wide open. The Cam Patterson just crawled through it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, Sai, who uh, told you that you're funny? Let's talk about it. Oh my God. Um, What's the funniest thing you've ever done in your entire life? Um, actually, nothing. Apparently. Uh, being here, he agreed right there. There you go, uh, guys. He's please, my validation. Guys, please right there. do Thank not sidetrack wish. him. They, oh, he's looking for wonderful. anything to save him right now. I know. Sai, right? you news, signed maybe. up for this. Yeah, I did. Okay, so let's talk about it. What's a redeeming quality about you that might get these people back on your side? Anything that you've ever done or accomplished in your life? Um, doing cocaine in multiple countries. Um, that's not going to do it. That's not going to do it. Degenerates, I see it. I know. Wow. No, I feel that. no, they're not. They're not really? degenerates. They're, they're not ugly. These are real fun. comedy fans. What? Real what? what yeah. What's going on with you, Sai? <laughs> These people paid to be here tonight. Why would you pay to be here? Oh, look how uh, angry this Cy, guy. No, not, no, no. I'm joking. You're, I'm, you're, joking you're, I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm Why sorry. would you pay to be here? I'm Why sorry. are your eyes so small? You have uh, really small eyeballs. I do. I do. Um, I don't know. I think I might be Asian. Probably. Who knows? Probably. Yeah. Hey, Sal, Sal, were you born with money? Were you born when you no. come from money? No. Is English your first language? No. Are your, par uh, are your parents you still together? Not even that, no. Okay. Did you go to college? Dropped out. What's the greatest accomplishment of your entire life? Honestly, being real, um, having a three-way probably, and not remembering anything about it. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I blacked out for most of it. Did so. someone lose a butt plug up your ass? <laughs> Sai, I find people like you to be completely unbearable. You don't even get a little joke book. Leave the stage. <laughs> oh. Goodbye. Oh, Say nothing God. else. Say nothing. Prepare next time. Do something. Unbelievable. I mean, what do you want? It's what the show is. I give the opportunity to everybody to sign up. Some people are just unbearable, wretched human beings. Make some noise for your next comedian, Daniel Shepard. Let's see what happens. Could be anything. How's it going, Mothership? All right, I'm not super famous yet, I'll admit. But my aunt actually just made it big. She's in a major Netflix series. Yeah, right, right? But anyway, <laughs> it's actually the confession killer because she got brutally murdered. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> back in 1979, her and her boyfriend got uh, murdered by five illegal immigrants. Uh, she was Mexican, her boyfriend was white, and uh, some funny stuff. 
But <laughs> I actually found out about this during Netflix and chilling. Okay, I was in the middle of trying to fuck and my family's crying on the damn TV. <laughs> and you know I had to rewind that shit, right? <laughs> Nothing makes you come harder than your mama's tears, evidently. <laughs> evidently. But hey, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? My mother's a conservative Mexican woman. She thinks plan B is murder. Murder. Okay, and uh, I've administered plan B thousands of times, unbeknownst to her. So it turns out I'm a serial killer. My mama's little serial killer. Anthony. Okay, thank you. Daniel Shepard, everybody. A real way to swing the momentum back around into the comedy show. Hi, Daniel. How are you? Am I? Am I? How long you been doing stand-up? I'm going on like uh, four years solid. Four years solid. Technically, you say. I started in 2016, but 2019 is when I started like seriously grinding. You know. Okay. Here in Austin, I'm from Austin, born and raised. Okay, there you yeah, go. That's right, Austin. That's tonight. A, look at that. They, that's how. That's how much you got from the hometown crowd. <laughs> they, hey, none of y'all from here, motherfuckers. God damn. All right, another. I, 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 oh, go ahead, Daniel. I'm half immigrant. It's okay. Okay. What kind? Father's of? from New York. Okay. Mother's Mexican. All right. Y'all are Californian. You doing your own interview right now? <laughs> Daniel. You look like No Action Bronson. Oh, <laughs> That's about right. You're the TikTok guy. That's right. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Just sold out three shows at the Paramount Film Festival next month. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. That's fun. No I love that these. I love these guys just keep coming up here bombing and talking shit about the successful <laughs> things around them. <laughs> no, big fan, Don. It's big absolutely fan. incredible. Daniel, so four years solid. Would you think that was your best minute that you've ever written? Definitely not. So no, 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 sorry. That's one of my good minutes, actually. Right so now. Well, let's... Not let's the best minute I've ever had, ever, you know. Oh, my God. It's unbelievable. You're just in your own little world, huh? Daniel, look at me. Look at me. You're being interviewed by me. Hello. Over here. Anthony. No, no, no. Not Anthony. It's okay. I don't fucking know you. Daniel. Okay. Are you, you're done. There goes Daniel <laughs> Shepard, everybody. We're going to keep it moving. Goodbye. Put the mic in the mic stand. Don't ever sign up again. Thank you. That way. Back to obscurity you go. It's that way. Yep. All right, this is very exciting, actually. Your next comedian, I have been informed that the I next to their name means that they're inside of the room. That means that it's one of you, one of your very own people. Very different than the 200 people in the alleyway or at the bar next door where we keep them all funneled. So, it is my pleasure to introduce, and whoever this is, you're going to go that way, and they're, you're gonna follow this young buck all the way around. Make some noise for Nico De Cesare, everybody. Here he comes, right from the middle of the room. You're seeing it live. Just like the good old days from inside the room. One of your own. My guess, guaranteed he does better than the last two guys did. It has to be. Nico De Cesare, everybody. How you doing? Sorry, I forgot to masturbate today. <laughs> I'm Nico, I'm from Boston. Happy Juneteenth. Haven't said the N-word once today. I'm just kidding, I listened to some rap music on the way over here. <sighs> so growing up in Boston, you can understand I had a very progressive father. I noticed here, a lot of guys, they don't wear flip-flops. I like that, because where I'm from, we don't wear flip-flops either. I was always told, flip-flops are for faggots. <laughs> and it was mostly just the thing my dad said, but as I got older, I understood it more because <laughs> you saw guys walking down the street and you just heard, <laughs> <laughs> and it made a lot more sense. <laughs> Swishy pants are gay too. <laughs> they also make them, oh, I'm done, thank God. Nico De Cesare, ladies and gentlemen. The crowd goes absolutely wild. They are so desensitized to comedy that all you had to do was come up here and rattle off about how shit's gay. <laughs> and you fucking killed somehow. They rooted for their own, one of the insiders. Uh, Nico De Cesare, how do you feel, my friend? I feel fucking awesome. I love that you think, I just noticed right now the shorts that you're wearing Very gay. while talking about all the shit that's gay. 
you Daisy came up Duke here. Song. I mean, oh my God, that is absolutely incredible. That's for you to wear those and talk about gay shit. That is just criminal. Yeah. That's like me looking like me and talking about gay shit. <laughs> Nico, welcome to the show. Have you ever done stand up before? Never in my life. Wow. <laughs> Oh my God, this is the only show in the world where you can go back-to-back -back comedians, four years solid, not a funny thing, not a movement from the room, and then first time ever on stage, another guy had a window between 100 and 300 times on stage, <laughs> flatlined in the room, hold on a second, uh, the great Ahmed Johnson from the WWE just walked in, everybody. Uh, so, Nico, let's talk about it. Where are you from? What's I'm, going on? I'm from Boston, but Revere, Massachusetts. Rogan, okay. Rogan lived there for, like, part of his life. Okay. Revere Is Beach. that where he grew up? Yeah. I uh, uh, grew up right north. My family's from there. So, yes. Okay. That's right. Very good. Absolutely. That makes sense. And here you are, full circle, the most successful person ever from Revere. Yeah. Owns the club that you're in right now. Yep. And you're one of the least successful people yes. ever from Revere. Yes. And you're wearing those shorts. If he knew, Joe Rogan knew that someone was wearing those shorts on stage, you wouldn't be out. here. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. There'd be a Navy SEAL with a red <laughs> laser on your chest right now. Okay, so let's talk about it. What do you do for work, Nico? Uh, I'm in real estate development, and family has a body shop. It's my family's body shop. Okay. Yeah. I love it. Family's got a body shop. Yeah. That's cool. Alice Auto Body. Okay. Yeah. How's it going out there? Is the business booming? Yeah, it's good. It's Cars good. are breaking down? Everybody's crashing, texting and driving. I love it. It's great. I love it. Yeah, it's phenomenal. Hell yeah. Yeah. Why, why are you dressed like the camp counselor that fucks the female camp counselors yeah. instead of Because I'm the guy that fucks the camp counselors. Hell yeah. You do seem like a ladies man. You've got the hair, you yeah. got swag, you're calling shit gay while looking <laughs> kind of gay. Uh, what's your love life like? Can you give us like a, what's your body count? How many? Uh, I got... HPV, so that counts. Um, All right. I got enough count there, but Welcome I am... Welcome to Austin, brother. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was here, actually, for my bachelor party, and this was the last night. We stayed an extra night to come here. The wow. The reason why we came here is for the show. Holy so, shit. So you know, wait a second. Lucky. You came to Austin to yeah, celebrate your bachelor party, stayed yeah, an extra is. night for Kill Tony, yep. signed up. Your odds yep. of getting up over 1 in yep. 200, and here you are. Yeah. That's incredible. So God loves me. When do you get married? I'm getting married in August. Okay, let's talk about it. What does right. this girl do? She's uh, She worked at a hotel, then COVID fucked that up. Now she's in uh, digital operations or some shit. I don't know. Okay. I don't really know. But she's, she's wonderful. She has a Why nice you, job. Gra use your left hand. Grab Sorry, the I'm middle of that. No, yeah, sure, that'll work. Yep. You there you go. Yeah. Now you can stand straight up. Right, cool. There you go. I'm used to hunching. <laughs> yeah. I look like Quasimodo. The hunchback of Revere Beach over yeah. here. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so where'd you meet this girl? I met her in college, and then we started dating a couple years after we graduated. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, you met her in college. Yeah. Okay, yep. so you haven't had much time to be a womanizer at all, huh? No, I started early. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, yeah. and you were just plowing through them on the regular. Yeah, very sexually jaded from a young age. I was the youngest of three boys, so there was a lot of pornographic material in the house. Why were you sexually jaded? A lot of pornographic material in the house. Oh, okay. I guess we have different definitions of the word jaded, but... <laughs> well, okay. Yeah. All right. And uh, do you have any special moves in the bedroom? Is there any Revere Beach specials, like the, this girl that uh, you have? Like, do you have any special moves Not that you do? Not with my girl, because she's very nice. I don't do bad things, but... Uh, How about another pull? girl? What Any other girls that you're fucking? Do you have any special moves in the bedroom? For well, them? I'm... I'm a chronic masturbator, so I mean, it's mostly when she's cooking, I'm in the closet just like... Is that true? Yeah. Okay, how many time. times do you masturbate? At, at least twice a day. Really? Yeah. Why yeah. in the closet? Because he's gay. I mean, the shorts, <laughs> <come on. laughs> So you masturbate twice a day and you still have a healthy love life? Yeah, yeah. Okay. What, what is going on? How old are you? 30. 30? Yeah. All right. So, wow, that is incredible. Yeah. How many times do you have sex a day or a week? I uh, try to do at least twice a week. Twice a week? Yeah. Don't you think you'd have more if you didn't masturbate in the closet twice a day? For sure. For sure. It's just, 
It's so much easier to jerk off. But this is like a good girl. You seem to she's imply that she's a really sweet, she's good girl. She's you don't even know what she does for work. We watch the show every Monday, so next Monday she's going to fucking kill me. But, okay. Yeah. I have good news for you. You have three weeks. We're three episodes oh, nice. ahead right, right awesome. now. Awesome. <laughs> but oh, yeah. it's not going to be August just yet. <laughs> uh, what, what's your go-to porn? <sighs> when you're in the closet, what is it? Uh, you, you use your phone? I like... Uh, you look it up on your phone when yeah, you're in the course. closet? And when you have like a bottle of lotion in there? You just no, dry course. hand you just it? your own belt and... Okay. <laughs> All right. I like it. Leave it for my guy to revere to have the British are coming. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, that's a little... American history oh, reference for y'all. Very rarely do I get to do a Paul Revere joke on this show. <laughs> Seriously, what kind of porn do you watch in the closet? Uh, I like large white asses. Large white yeah. asses. Okay. Yeah. No, is it specifically the ass itself has to be large, or are you into like a more plump type of girl? No, just a big ass is fun. So what do you look up? Big asses? Big ass. Pog. Ah, Pog, Pog's yeah. a good one. I Pog. actually have been in the. Uh, I've been in. When, really? I, I'm. There's something about a. Uh, when it's when, it, when, when when going to porn, there's something about a uh, just a real fucking meaty bitch wow. that. Uh, <laughs> there's just something about it. Brian, do you have any tips for the guys? Yes, we're going to our senior <laughs> big white ass correspondent, Brian Simpson. <laughs> oh, so, hey, listen, I'm. I'm I'm, I'm offended that y'all would get your stereotypes mixed up on Juneteenth. It's, <laughs> it's skinny niggas that like fat white bitches. It's not. Ah. Yeah. Fat, fat black dudes don't do. Fat black dudes date fat black women. Right. Skinny mm-hmm. black dudes date fat white women. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. There's like flips. It's something like the weight on their shoulders or some shit like that. Right. <laughs> it's like there's always stereotypes are affected it, by the weight of the individual. Yeah. Is your, is your wife a big girl? No, she's skinny. Uh, that's okay. that's that's gonna, well, no, I met her. She lost like a ton of weight when I met her. She was very voluptuous when I met her, and then she what happened? How did she lose? The I weight? think it was just like post college, like beer weight. Or oh gosh, she's gonna kill me. Um, no, but she is she is gorgeous. I love her. Yeah, Kelly, I love you. You already said you're into big asses, and she doesn't have big ass. You're it's just that's, that's porn. That's Porn's porn. different. Porn. Porn's totally different. Porn is different. Yeah, I'll give you sure. that. That's not the way she's gonna see it. <laughs> no, of course not. You're gonna be having another bachelor party in about a year, dog. It's yeah, gone. yeah, we're coming back. Wrap we're it coming up. Coming back. I mean, she is gonna see this. You yep. have dug yourself in a little tiny bit of a hole, oh, uh, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if you started masturbating in that <laughs> hole. But since Sorry. she's gonna see this, and you're getting married in two months, and this comes out in three weeks, why don't you, uh, why don't you look at that camera right there, Yoni? Come on in here. Get really, really close, all the way in. All the way in, Yoni. And why don't you look directly at that camera and uh, tell her uh, what you think about her. Kelly, I love you. I'm so excited to marry you. I'm sorry for what I said. <laughs> you understand it. I love you. Okay. Aww. Gay. Gay. <laughs> My friend, oh, you are the first yeah. person tonight to get a big joke book. Uh, yeah, baby. Represent. Absolutely awesome. Congratulations. There he goes, Nico De Cesare, ladies and gentlemen. And in an unbelievable turn of events, ladies and gentlemen, I've pulled another name out of the bucket. And again, this never happens anymore. And this part never happens where it's back to back. I've pulled another inside name, everybody. So another one of yourselves, the person that's done the best so far tonight, uh, another insider, make some noise for Brett Sholenben, or Shonenben, or Sholaben. Well, here he is. You're seeing it live in the flesh. Brett Sholeben, or Shobabainen, Sholep, Shorben. Uh, we have to get a girl. Oh my god. So you ever do that thing where you kind of feel like you're very intuitive with your partner and you're with your friend fishing, you drop your phone in the water and then you call your girl from your phone and then she picks up and she's like, oh hey babe, I was hoping it's going to be you. But then you realize, like, you think it's all sweet and everything, but it's like, oh, I'm calling you from my friend's phone, but 
you know, it's so, it's so cool that we're connected like that. Um, yeah, not fun. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. So, you, there's times you kind of, like, I, I was married, and you, you start realizing things are going a little bit south. Um, when I met my wife, she was all like, you know, you can make me laugh all the time. I really love that, no matter how bad the day. Well, the first time I took the stage, like, everybody in the room was laughing a few times, but she was the only one not. And it's probably the bad time to take the stage at her funeral. So. <laughs> Adorable. It's funny how, like, the people from the inside are so much realer than the professional comedians <laughs> that supposedly wait and are dying to be up here. You seem like you don't even give a fuck, and I, I, it's no, great. It shows. Yeah. It seems real. Yeah. Brett, what's your last name? I can't quite read it's this. It's Shane Laban. Shane Lieben. Yeah, it's German. Oh, yes, we can tell. This is cool. It's blicked and blocked in. It's German. <laughs> yes, we know. Thank you. I love it, Brett. So welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, how many Jews did you kill in World War II? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> two. Okay, two. very good. You Man. killed You killed none of them here tonight. Um, <laughs> so let's talk about it, Brett. You've done stand-up before? No. Okay. How oh. about a hand? It's his first time, everyone. <laughs> let's find out what's real and what's not. Yeah. Were you really married? I was, yeah. Okay. And You're not anymore? No. Widow. Did she really die? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. What happened? Yeah. Uh, overdose. Accidental overdose. Overdose. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> I'm staring at the lights right now, and so did she at one point, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. What did she overdose on? Was it that sweet dick? Am I right? <laughs> you know it. No. Uh, long, uh, she was taking ketamine from her where she was working, and then she couldn't get it, I guess, and she took something else. Ah, uh, yes. I hope all you blood. Austinites yeah. are listening to this, yeah. you fucking ketamine addicts. Yeah. <laughs> all right, yeah, I got real in here just then. Yeah. People are like, wait, what? You ran out of ketamine? What the fuck? Every, yeah. every, everybody just, was thinking what I was thinking. Like that doesn't sound like an accidental. Like you, she was stealing shit from work. Sound like she? Because when you say accidental overdose, I thought you meant like it was some prescribed medication that she took too many. Well, she was on Xanax and stuff too, and Clonopin, uh, okay. and there's a mix. Damn, how long yeah. were you married for? Uh, about fifteen years. Fifteen years. Yeah. When did that happen? Uh, t March of twenty twenty one. March twenty twenty one. My God, that had to be fucking hard, huh? <laughs> oh yeah. Wow. So how many times now a day do you masturbate in your closet? <laughs> I'm, I'm not up to two yet. but Right. You're working on yeah, it. The tears help. Working on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can be happy now. Stop being sad, ladies. Turning it around. This is what's magical about the show. Yeah. I love it. So very, very cool. How long have you wanted to try stand-up comedy? I may not even six months. Been watching the show, and then what, in March this year I got tickets, and then I started thinking I'm like, well, if I get the opportunity, I'll I'll get there and I'll put my name in the bucket, and we'll give it a shot. Very cool. Well, let me tell you something, man. You you have one of the hardest things to to have, like for people to get is likability. Just automatic. Yeah. Uh -huh. You're likable. You talk about some dark shit, but you yeah. you right there on the line, and it's 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 impressive. You should do more. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, thank you. What do you do for fun? I want to know more about you. Tell us more about the life of Brett Schmichtenschmachten. <laughs> uh, recently, I've actually been going to a lot more cowboy games, doing stuff, getting out. I know it was something. Is that where you lived, Dallas? Yeah, yeah, nice. in Arlington. Yeah. Okay. Born and raised there? No, uh, born and raised in Minnesota. Nice. Yeah. How long have you been in Dallas? Eleven years. Beautiful. Congratulations for thank getting you. out of Minnesota. Oh, too. I know. <laughs> Yeah. Family wants me to go back. I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, it's very much just Canada. Yeah. Don't do it. <laughs> um, yeah. So now you're in Dallas, 11 years. Uh, what did you do to cope with the loss? What did you? F how did you recover from that? You have kids? I have two kids. They're 13 and 15 right now. Right. And yeah. so you're just out there rocking it. Super cool single dad. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Have you, have you brought any um, ladies back to the house yet? Not in that sense. 
<laughs> okay, but wh- okay, well, what, do, what, what do you do to cope with the Cowboys losing so much? Oh, come on. <laughs> Come on. I'm, We're I'm talking just, about a serious oh, thing. Oh, you mean his wife. Hey, uh, I'm thankful uh, they're sponsored by Miller Lite, not Bud Light. So. Oh, you <laughs> it, son it of a bitch. You <laughs> son of a bitch. Okay, so what do you mean not in that sense? I wouldn't bring someone... Like through the back door. You sneak right, in. Right, yeah, I got a window. You, yeah, make, sure, you make sure that the kids yeah. are asleep or whatever. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And then Benadryl they helps. come in. Okay. <laughs> You're a funny guy. I think this guy might have poisoned his wife. No? Yeah. A Benadryl helps. Right. Uh, I got to yeah. go to my shift at Top Golf, kids. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Make sure you double check the measurements. You don't want to over Benadryl yeah. them and uh, have them, them, them follow in the mother's footsteps. Um, so is that, is that hard to do? Is it hard to sneak a woman in with a 13 and a 15 year old? Have they busted you yet? No, but then that's, I mean, like in Austin, they got in a hotel. You're not afraid oh, that okay. they think their dad can't get no pussy? Oh, my, my, my kids, it's, it's creepy. Um, they tell me often that their friends think it look like Johnny Sins. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Your 13 and your 15-year-old know oh. th- about a porn star? Yeah, no, when my daughter was 10, her friends were telling me that my friends say oh. you look like Johnny Sins. He's brought up Johnny Sins, and you <laughs> yeah. do indeed look like Johnny Sins. <laughs> this just in, you look like Johnny Sins. That is incredible. <laughs> How do your yeah. kids know about that? Though? That's a great question. I, my, their friends do, and I right. was at church yesterday with my daughter. Oh, and, yes. And one of the little boys. Johnny confessing his sins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and one of my daughter's friends saw me and he mouthed to me and her oh Johnny Sins so and his parents are right there and I'm like at oh church, I can ruin your this. Kids, at church your kids know who Johnny Sins is yeah. and what makes you think they're not going to find this episode of Kill Tony in oh. which you're talking about sneaking a yeah. hose into their 100%, house 100% they will but it's all for laughs I love it amazing <laughs> yeah it's just <laughs> jokes just jokes what else about you what else do you do for fun uh, not a whole lot. I mean, we do the sporting goods, the sporting stuff. Uh, uh-huh. My kid's in basketball, so it's a lot of taking him to and from practices. Uh, been getting out more. I end, ended up finding a like swinger bar where I live. Oh, was, shit. Look at you. <laughs> Hell yeah. And was oddly hit on by like a really old guy. That right. Kept well, you're all, a fan of the yeah. Cowboys, so I mean. <laughs> wow. So uh, I'm gonna go back to a question I asked earlier, and then blew by. Uh, wh- how did you what? Wh- how did you fill that void? How did you cope with the loss of your? Uh, were you there when it happened? You found her? No. Uh, so I was making dinner and was like plating it all up. So she was usually home around the same time every night. Oh God. And I got a knock on the door, like a very like authoritative. Oh knock. God. And I'm like, oh shit, this isn't gonna be good. It's like I don't know if it's gonna be like someone trying to like bust in. Right. Was that her knocking on heaven to sort no. of? <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. It's a, one of my favorite songs. I'm sorry. No, it's, it's local PD. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And they and yeah. and, the, and the kids were there. Uh, they were in the vicinity, but we have a ring camera, and uh. it's all linked to their phone. So my daughter comes running around the corner, and she's oh like, "Oh my god, mom's dead." Oh like, no. Do you remember not. what you made that day? What was for dinner? I'm uh, just pork, curious. Pork chops. Ooh, pork chops. Wow. Yeah. Boneless or uh, boneless? Bon- yeah. wow. She missed out. Oh I my know. goodness! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Balsamic glaze. Oh my goodness! Balsamic glaze with just a pepper of Xanax on top. She would have loved it. She would have loved it. Yeah. Incredible. I cannot get enough of your sense of humor. I mean, it is incredible to watch you laugh at this stuff and digest it and be able to roll with that. I mean, my mind is completely blown that... uh, that uh, that we have uh, fans of the show uh, that are you know this fucking cool you know you've yeah. coped with something you've dealt with something you come up here you have a magical night like this um, I love it I'm gonna give you the second big joke book of the awesome. night by the great Bonesai hell yeah thank you make some noise for Brett Hefeweizen everybody Brett Scholemeisen. All right, we're getting deeper in the show. We have not had a uh, female comedian tonight, so I pulled in the bucket until I found one. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Anastasia Lawless, everybody. Here we go. (laughs) 
Come on, one more time for Anastasia, everybody. Let's go. What is up, motherfuckers? I love whores, sluts, and porn stars because they are willing to do the jobs I will gladly do the paperwork to outsource. All right, you know what I'm saying? Do I want a train run on me? Not particularly, no, you know? I had a gentleman ask me recently, though, how do you know you don't want a train run on you? And since I'm such a genuine lady, I really gave it some thought, you know? It's not the multiple dicks I have issue with. It's the multiple ego stroking afterwards. Ladies, you know what I'm talking about. Did you like it? Did you come? Motherfucker, you know how I know you came? Because as you were coming, you're like, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Yeah, if I didn't do that, it's a good bet that I didn't fucking come. Yeah, (laughs) good fucking bet. Yeah, no, I'm going to leave that work to the ladies of the night with the heart of fucking gold, all right? They're fucking amazing at it. They're fucking great at it. They're like, yeah, daddy, right there. You're the best I ever had. A lot easier to lie when you get paid for it. You know what I'm saying? Okay, Anastasia Lawless. Very interesting set, talking about how silent you stay. What's more silent, you during sex or the audience during your sets? I'm actually... I'm actually very vocal, but you know, you have to make me come, you know, like, and I'll tell you, like, I'm coming, you know, just like you guys do. Is that your real voice? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Is that your real voice? Yes. Yes, it is. It is. It's been working for me for 16 years. This is your, uh, Mm -hmm. this is your first time on the show? No. Okay. When was your last time on the show? It's been about a year. How did that go? It went well. Have you washed your hair since then? Yes. It's very hot outside, though. It is so indeed. It I is don't indeed. lack sweat glands. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. All right, Anastasia. What do you do for work? I'm a postpartum doula, newborn care specialist. What does that mean? I take care of babies, and I help parents and families in the beginning stages of their journey into new family land. What qualifications do you have to have to do that? I have lots of experience. I've taken 50-hour courses, and yeah, I've traveled the states doing it. Yeah. Okay. So you have to have certified. You you know CPR certified is very. Have big you ever deal. had to save a baby? I have had to help a baby from choking to death. Yes. So what did you have to do? You like plunge the stuff out Actually, of it? Actually, it's not. And I, I have to be current on my it, courses, so I have to say this is you should not do this anymore. But it used to be that you could do the little. Hook? What That's is that? What I did. Is that you getting a butt Ooh. plug out of an ass? No. Or <laughs> Do you get the, earlier, the, so. the food out of their mouth? You know? You hook oh, it. so it was choking. Yeah. Were you feeding it? No. It was so a someone toddler. else was feeding it. She was feeding herself. She oh. was a toddler. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Weirdest thing that's ever happened when you're working with these babies? Anything ever stand out to you? Uh, all of your all of your tons and tons and tons of experience. Weirdest thing that ever happened to me was a baby with pyloric stenosis. Ooh, what's that? <laughs> Sounds like a future Kill Tony regular to me. <laughs> <laughs> it is a genetic condition where they do not fully digest their food. So even after like 30 minutes, they're projectiling their whole bottle. And yeah. So this baby was doing that for, I want to say, three weeks before I got there. That's wild, because you just did it for one minute on the Kill Tony. <laughs> yeah, that was incredible. That is true. It is amazing. How long have you been doing stand-up, Anastasia? June will be two years. June will be two years. All of it here in Austin, Texas? Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, I do believe there is a universal Amber Alert going on right now. That is... Incredible. Baby baby vomiting all over uh, everything, everywhere. Missing its postpartum with bibbidi bop. Okay. What do you do for fun, Anastasia? What's like your wild nightlife like? Uh, I don't really have a wild life night. I'm in my 30s, so... Right. Uh, perfect. <laughs> You're already basically dead. You're right. <laughs> no. <clears throat> okay. I like to, you know hike and I like to write songs and write poetry and I do pastel hey, work. Anastasia, how many Burning Mans in a row have you been to? I've never been. I don't have that much money. <laughs> God, I mean. You should change your stage name to Anastasia because <laughs> she is putting me to salute. 
Oh my goodness. Speaking of anesthesia, how about one more time for the last guy's wife, everybody? Uh, he's laughing. I see him. He's laughing. For those of you groaning, he's laughing. Oh, look who's not laughing over here. Fucking Jesus Christ, dude. Amazing. Anastasia. Wow. Um, are you in a relationship? No. When's the last time you were in a relationship? I was actually in a 10-year relationship. Okay. When did that end? It the ended train. around... Huh? No, I like I said, I'm not into the... I'm not into drains, you know? Uh, what? What just happened there? <laughs> he said the train, and I said, I'm not into trains. So that's not what right. ended our relationship. COVID. Uh, COVID we, ended your relationship. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What happened? We had to spend all our time together, and we we're like, oh, we fucking hate each other. <laughs> right. And then yeah. after everything you say, you go, <laughs> and he's like, Jesus fucking Christ. I can't fucking deal with it. Somebody give me some fucking. Yeah, there it is. Incredible. What did he do for a living? Ten years in a relationship. That's a long he's time. We both are just hustlers. We do what we need to do to make money. Okay, know? right. We Say that you can train babies or whatever. Train babies? I don't train them. I just did, help parents. Did he make you come? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. I wouldn't be with somebody for 10 years if they couldn't make me fucking come. <laughs> like, well, it look. seems like he didn't want to be with somebody for 10 years either. <laughs> How did it end? Was it his idea? No, it was mutual. Okay. All right. Did you guys live together? Friends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you don't live we together. We were engaged to everything, yeah. Wow, mm -hmm. look at that. Incredible. Mm -hmm. What Cracker Barrel did he propose at? <laughs> <laughs> he did not propose at Crackle Barrel. <laughs> no, but he did propose to a barrel that is a cracker. Um, I'm actually oh. mixed. Oh, really? What are you mixed with? I'm Japanese and oh. white, yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't really see the Japanese at all. And I don't, I don't see the uh, intelligence of the Japanese running through you either. Incredible. What is the most Japanese thing about you? You a bad driver? No. No. Mm -mm. What do you think is the most Japanese thing about you? You ever do anything and you're like, ah, it's my Japanese side. Like me, I talk with my hands. I'm Italian. You're Japanese. Mm -hmm. What's your thing? Well, the laughing, the giggling, the Asian giggle. Oh, I do see what it. What about yeah. the suicide mm -hmm. bombing on stage? <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to make that noise yet. It's been two years it's, it's and a month. It's not May anymore. You're right. To. Okay. <laughs> Anastasia, congratulations. Uh, you got on the show again. You already have a little joke book, I'm guessing, from your no, last time. I have time. a big joke book. You have a big joke book? Mm -hmm. Incredible. Yeah. Well, you should use it. <laughs> there she goes. Anastasia Lawless, everybody. And now, everybody, we've been through it here tonight. A lot of highs, a lot of lows. Hans Kim retained the re-entry of David Lucas into the Kill Tony universe. The shining performance of the future Cam Patterson. And two unbelievably compelling inside the building bucket pulls. A lot of hard bombings. A lot of people... You know, I mean, the thing about Austin becoming the comedy capital of the world is that a lot of the best comedians in the world are moving here, which also means that a lot of the worst comedians in the world are moving here. We got to see some of those tonight. And now that all comes to an end. Now I would bet everything I own that the next few minutes are going to be fun as hell because I know because this guy has the record for most appearances all time on this show. The most interviews, the most new minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, you know him, you love him. It's the Vanilla Gorilla, the Memphis Strangler, the Big Red Machine, William Montgomery! Shouts out to all my boys in Jamaica for the happy Juneteenth. I think the worst thing that ever happened to me was when I met my haters at age three. 
A submarine that takes tourists deep into the ocean took to look at the Titanic wreckage is missing. The last time five tourists got lost in something that deep, Red Band's mom was screaming, what in a time, what in a time. <laughs> I'm actually thinking about becoming a Titanic truther. You mean you couldn't avoid an iceberg in an ocean that big? <laughs> an Arizona man was mauled to death by a bear in an unprovoked attack. Wait, unprovoked? That dumbass walked up right to a motherfucking wild bear! <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's all I got. Unbelievable. 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 The man is in pure fighting shape. Always makes it, never misses, again and again and again. The Titanic truther joke, perhaps being my favorite joke of the night tonight. Your delivery, your style, your energy, you've never been stronger. We found you when you were a bloated, obese mess. And no I remember, I still get the memories on my Instagram sometime of years ago, and it's a bunch of me listening to the old back, just zooming in on inanimate objects at four in the morning. Yeah, it makes me feel weird, but luckily, I think we're past that, Trevor, I think. <laughs> what did you mean when you said that you met all your haters when you were three? Uh, when I was three, I actually went to a place called Silver Springs outside of Gainesville, Florida, and I went up there to get the snake wrapped around my neck, and the guy was like, where are you from? And I kept on saying America, and then everybody was laughing, and I didn't understand why, and he kept on asking me where I was from, and I kept on saying America, and there were a couple fucking haters out in the crowd, and I remember looking at him just thinking, I am from America, I don't get it. So it's pretty much that, just at Silver Springs. If y'all are ever outside of Gainesville, Florida, visit Silver Springs. They have a really great glass bottom boat. And Tony, I'm glad you asked me about that. I actually have a new sponsor tonight, Silver Springs Theme Park outside of Gainesville, Florida. Wow. Tony, you know what I love about William? Yeah. Is that he's he's sober now, and he's still weird as fuck. Like yeah. I, I, when he came out here, because I came out here way after these two, when he came out here and I heard he got sober and lost all his weight, I was like, oh, William was going to be fucking normal now. No, this motherfucker, it's this is him off cocaine. Y'all understand that? Yeah. <laughs> There's a certain amazing uh, group of comedians that get sober and they stay weird. Yeah. You know? It is incredible. There's an all star lineup. You, Theo, right? Tim Dillon. Who Still. else? I think uh, Gallagher, he famously got sober, the guy who did all the watermelon stuff. I mean, he was really bad off on crystal meth, but... Indeed, indeed. John yeah, Mulaney? It's great that you mentioned yeah, Gallagher. John Mulaney has a really bad crystal meth problem, too. Yeah, I think he got... who uh, Sinbad, I think, had a really bad crystal meth problem as well. He got sober. He was still weird. Sh shout out to Gallagher, who uh, smashed more watermelons than anybody on Juneteenth ever has. Um, <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Gallagher! <laughs> Wait, that wasn't as good. Happy Juneteenth! So Juneteenth is a Jamaican holiday to you? Yes, I think it is. That's the little I did a little bit of research earlier. I think it started out in Jamaica. Where did you do this research at exactly? Where, uh, where? It's on uh, Mad Magazine. I've been reading a bunch <laughs> of Mad Magazines. There was an article. Uh, Alfred E. Newman's still going strong, but yeah, I read it in Mad Magazine. I love it. How much is the Silver Springs Amusement Park paying you? Is that what it's called? Yes, yeah, Silver Springs Amusement Park right outside of Gainesville, Florida, down in... Uh, <laughs> How much are they paying you each time you say that? Each time I say Silver Springs Amusement Park outside of Gainesville, Florida, it's $1,000. So wow. Please go to Silver Springs Amusement Park outside of Gainesville, Florida. Can you describe it to us? So there's some rides or anything that people should check out. Yeah, there's a glass bottom boat. You can actually, when I went with my family, they it's a boat with literally a glass bottom, so you can look down into the springs. When I went with my family, I think in the early 90s, that we actually saw a bloated corpse down there. So they had to close down the amusement park. Yeah, it was like this Hispanic guy, I think. He got super bloated. He was, I guess, doing some scuba diving stuff down in the springs, and 
yeah, we saw him, and I was asking my dad what was going on, and my dad refused to tell me, and it turned into a thing. And then that piece of shit literally put a snake around my neck, Tony, and he was asking me where I was from, and I kept on saying America, and I didn't understand why everybody was laughing at my ass! That thing... <laughs> <laughs> That thing that you do sometimes where you get really loud and it sounds kind of like urban, unlike the way that you normally speak, it sounds kind of, uh, what would the word be? It's a Waikiki beat! <laughs> where do you th- yeah, he screams like James Brown. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> yeah. You do. Where do you think that comes from? Where, where did that start? We had a really sweet lady that used to help out my parents, uh, an African-American lady growing up, and... Her name was Imogene, and she kind of got me talking like that from an early age. Okay. What was Imogene, what kind of help was she providing exactly when you say she was helping? Uh, Folding towels, doing the bedding, doing the dog walking, making the meals. I'm trying to figure out what my parents were actually doing back then. I mean, (laughs) Imogene was doing everything! (laughs) <laughs> Seriously, I'm trying to run and run and figure out what the fuck they were you know, doing. I love, I love how when William's just talking, he sounds like somebody that can't cook, and when he screams, he sounds like somebody that knows every recipe. That is true. How long was Emma Jean in your life? How is she still with your parents? She is not. She sadly got in a. There's actually a lot of quicksand outside of Memphis, and she. <laughs> Went out for a swim one day in the quicksand got her. A lot of people are these days, they're like, oh, quicksand, I'm never around quicksand. It's really not that deadly. Well, I can tell you firsthand, quicksand is deadly as shit. If you ever are around it, don't get in it because it'll suck you under. That's what happened to Emma Jean. Wow. That is unbelievable. <laughs> William, is there anything else we need to know about? Another unbelievable performance? It's, in fact, a basal cell carcinoma that I have on my fucking neck. I have to get it lasered off this Wednesday. So, so this Wednesday, you're going under the laser. Yes, going we under the laser. We know it's not an uncle laser because we're not going to see him for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Remember that earlier? when he Remember that? Yeah, got to go under the laser. Hopefully it'll be all right. Also, for anybody who watched last week's episode and was thinking maybe that was dog abuse, bringing Gator out here. She was shaking really bad. I'm happy to report she actually got drunk as shit in Mitzi's. After the show, she was taking tequila shot. She was taking Jager shot. Jager shot. She was doing vodka shot. Is this that weirdo y'all were talking you about? You spotted What's him. Fucking problem, you dude. You spotted him. That's incredible. He really stands out in the pile. He's, you could tell because he's the only one that has no emotion on his face he's, whatsoever. He's the guy from TikTok that likes the trains. Have you ever seen him? Oh yeah. Oh my That's gosh, Mister <laughs> Mister Roberts. Is that your TikTok handle? I'm kidding, you bitch. I don't know who the fuck. <laughs> So you were saying that the dog that was in question of animal cruelty last week because it was shaking profusely, this sweet little dog that you bought, um, that all is well because it was doing shots of liquor afterwards? Yeah, she's, uh, what, eight weeks old, nine weeks old now, so I'm thinking I can't drink, but my loved ones are sure as shit going to be drinking, so I got her drinking Pretty early on, I'm just a little worried. She's such a small little dog. I'm worried about the size of her liquor. I'm worried about the size of her kidneys. I don't know if it's a sustainable thing, but she's having fun. I'm having fun. We all having fun. William Montgomery, we absolutely love you. Another unbelievable okay. performance. Get get it, get him on Cameo. He's traveling the world with me on my stand-up tour, the Fully Grown Tour. Adding shows as we go. It's a massive stand-up theater tour. If I'm coming near your city, I highly implore you to uh, come along. Join in on the fun. Shout out to the Red Rose, the Yellow Rose, Austin Security Guard Service, Gel Blaster, CM Smokehouse, and Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey. How about one more time for the band, everybody? Matt Muling, John Bees, D Madness. 
Paul Deemer, Michael Gonzalez. The drawing from Ryan J. Ebelt is in. That pops up on your screen right now. The drawing from Chris Rogers, local artist, is in. I do believe that's the great Paul Deemer right there on the horns. Absolutely. How loud can this place get for my guests? The great Brian Simpson, everyone. BrianSimpsonComedy.com. He's coming soon to Denver and New York. Listen to BS with Brian Simpson. How about one more time for the great Trevor Wallace, everyone? TrevorWallaceComedy.com. Filming his special here in Austin, the Paramount, the 14th and 15th of July. I do believe it's sold out already. Listen to Stiff Socks with Trevor Wallace. We did it again. Check out my new comedy club, The Sunset Strip. SunsetStripATX.com. I love you, Ariel. Thank you, guys. Good night, everybody.